Good evening. All right, so um, this is the long-awaited 48 volt ALGCOM enclosure. Because um, as you know, um, running at 48 volts can sometimes be a major benefit, um, especially if you're running lots of loads at your tower. If you're using the Natonix switches, with Natonix, of course, you can put, uh, with their DC switches, anywhere from 12 to 72 volts into them, and then get 24 or 48 volts in uh, LV or VH out of them, so you can run all your different voltage devices, whether it's Ubiquiti Prisms, which are 24 volts, or the Mimosas, which are 24 or 48 volts, or Cambium, or, you know, the other standard WISP stuff, or routers and stuff like that, for that matter. In this case, we're running a 24-volt router with a head switch, because, you know, why not? Let's mix things up a bit. And some of you guys are Ubiquiti guys. I don't want to discriminate or shame people for using Ubiquiti. Um, so we've got this beautiful little head switch here, which is going to be our PoE switch for today. <clears throat> so, first things first, we're talking 48 volts here, right? Correct? Yes. Here, let's, let's, I'm going to put the goat, okay. Uh, we'll go, ah, here we go. We need batteries. One battery. Two battery. Ha, ha, ha. Three battery. And this time, four batteries. Four for 48 volts, because four times 12. I hope you can do that math, if you, especially if you're doing a wisp. Okay, so we've got our four batteries here. Now, the next step here. You can do this in any order you want. And remember, for cleanliness and whatnot, um, this isn't necessarily about cleanliness in this particular design. Um, this is just a demo enclosure for you guys to learn how to do this. This specific design may not suit your load requirements. You might need like a thousand watts at your site or whatever. And this definitely wouldn't be able to provide for a thousand watt site uh, unless you double these guys up or whatnot. So remember, this is specifically just a design to teach you guys how to do um, these enclosures in 48 volt mode. And of course, um, they do have the limitations. So you have to pick your equipment based on what you're going to be doing. So anyway, that's enough ranting about that for all the trolls out there are going to be like, that site's not big enough. All right, here we go. So let's get some jumpers going. All right. So first things first, remember I always say put a fuse uh, between your cells. And since we're running four cells here, I am going to stick a fuse right in the middle of my battery bank first there we go so that is right in the middle simply put right now we're going to do the outside batteries so there's jumper number one and we've got jumper number two jumpers don't really matter in color but i like to keep them black anyway mainly because black is a neutral color and uh, typically if it's black and not indicated by any kind of color you can just assume that it's a general purpose wire. So now we've got four 12s in line, which will give us our 48 volts, which is the nominal voltage we're referring to. Because ultimately, if you go like 13.5, which is the float voltage on these batteries, and multiply that by four, you get like 54.4, which is what this guy spits out. But we call it 48 volt anyway, because that's, you know, nominal voltage. All right, so our batteries are prepped. We've got the batteries right here. So I guess the first thing we should probably do here is remove the goat and remove our raccoon here. What's really funny is my husband got attacked by raccoons the other night on his way home from work. That doesn't happen very often unless you're in Canada. All right, so uh, power supply. So I'm going to take this uh, RB2011. I'm just going to start mounting stuff, actually. Again, no order to this. It doesn't have to be rhyme or reason. We're just uh, assembling a cabinet, so be picky if you want. Uh, maybe I should do this by hand. And then you guys are going to be like, oh, but why didn't you use a cordless drill? Because I didn't want to. <laughs> All right. So here we go. A little tip, by the way. If you're putting in light rack equipment, if you put it in your bottom screws first, uh, it will actually hold it up. So bottom screws go in. And look, oh, they're just finger tight. I finger tightened the bottom, and it's holding it in place. Here we go. I'll leave that up to you to determine whether that was a dirty joke or not. Um, here we go. And we've got our power supply. So let me get a power cord for the power supply. Now, something I should show you about this power supply. Power supply. There is a ground screw on the back. Now, remember, this is technically a negative 48 volt power supply. Uh, but this is actually designed as an isolating power supply. So there really is no 
ground reference on this. This this bothers me. For some reason, I can't seem to get the fuse to stay in, but that is totally on me. There we go. I think it's in. Okay, so what we're going to do here, because we're actually using mixed, we're going actually like uh, positive voltage on this site. It's not a negative 48 volt uh, telecom site, is we are simply going to attach the ground and not add a reference. Because realistically, if we're lucky and we set the site up properly and everything's grounded in accordance to your proper grounding procedures uh, as listed by your local electrical uh, uh, guidelines, then, uh, or my video, then you should actually not ever see uh, a surge make it to here, really. I mean, that can happen because lightning goes where it wants to, but if you really protect the hell out of your stuff, you probably shouldn't see a surge get through. So there, we've got our ground wire on here. And I'm just going to start mounting this. Now I'm gonna put the uh, power supply here on the bottom. There we go. I'm just going to finger tighten the bottom. There we go. There's one. Uh, you got to make sure the bottoms are tight, otherwise things will just be a mess. There we go. Ha! And I'll just take my little screwdriver here, give her a little tweak. Lift it slightly so that it lines up with the other uh, nuts. There we go. Okay, so that's those two. And now we can take our edge switch. And because these stupid things come with the stupidest ears that only stick out like a couple of inches, like what is the poor purpose of that? And it's actually like a diversity type uh, screw hole pattern. So you can put the ears out or you can put them down to shelf mount them or whatever. So. That is stupid. Why would you, ubiquity not include full 19 inch ears for this thing? That, again, stupid, okay? Shame. All right. So I've already taken the liberty of putting the power leads on here. Now you'll notice that there is no polarity on there. That's because this thing has a full bridge rectifier in it, meaning that you can hook up your wires any way you want and it will just get proper polarization through itself internally. All right, so we're going to take this and put our ground wire on here. Get on there. Oh, my God. You ever wish you had an extra set of arms? I'm going to, like, move to, like, Lake Ontario by Darlington for a little while and hopefully, like, develop some additional limbs. Um, I'm having a hell of a time with not having enough. Unless I, like, totally went full monkey and learned how to use, like, my feet, I guess, to like do stuff or like develop a prehensile tail, which would be pretty damn cool. Okay. We've got our negative and positive here all coiled up. So let me just release these. There we go. Cause this is what's going to distribute the power through the enclosure. Yeah. There we go. All right, let's get that uh, AC power cord on here. Let's see if I can actually plug it in now, because I just realized a fatal flaw to me assembling this thing, is I should have actually put the power cord in first. Can I do it? Can I not make a fool of myself? Well, I already did, but there. All right, we got our AC in there now. Yay. Okay, so now let's throw our tops in, because, you know, the bottoms are kind of lonely. So let's uh, get the tops in now, the top screws. We're going to stick the tops into the nuts here. And tighten them up. Easy peasy. Give them a little twist for snugness. Don't tighten them too much unless you're a real jerk. Because uh, it'll be one of those nights at like 3 in the morning when it, the rain is pouring down or it's a blizzard. And there are coyotes baying at the friggin' door of your outdoor enclosure. And uh, you can't get something out of a rack because you stripped the screws. Because some meathead uh, tightened them up too much. Maybe previously you. This didn't happen to me. And it wasn't my fault, but shit happens, right? Here we go. So there we go. We've got our screws in here. There we go. All right, simple. Okay, so now we've got our AC cord here. We're going to tidy these up after with some. Oh, look, for all you purists out there, all you purist shitheads who, like, knock people who, you know, use zip ties to... Uh, tidy up their wire enclosures. Yeah, the proper way to do it is with Velcro, so we're not gonna use that. In fact, 
I bought zip ties. Yeah. So there you go. Okay, so we've got our grounds here. Um, so this is where uh, I'm not going to use that. <clears throat> so we'll move Mr. Raccoon and Mr. Goat. Actually, it's a Missy Goat because she's got an udder. All right. So grounding everything. Why do we ground everything? Because if you don't, shit gets blown up. And by the way, I found out something very interesting the other day. Because I am a YouTube creator, as minute in sub-1,000 or sub-1 million as I am, fact of the matter remains, I still have to get all the emails from the YouTube creator group. Uh, apparently there's this thing called COPPA or something ridiculous like that, where if your videos are not flagged for adult, you can get sued or something. Well, I thought that was kind of ridiculous, so I read up more about it, and I made my channel uh, Not Kids. Yeah, not kids. And on top of that, apparently I am actually encouraged to swear more in my videos. So call it unprofessional if you want, but I'm calling it covering my ass. Because the algorithm will pick up that I'm swearing in my videos and say, this is definitely not a kid's video. And for some of you guys who have had problems accessing my videos because they're listed as 18 plus, yeah, that's because I don't want kids watching my videos. I mean, I do want kids to learn and stuff, but I'm vulgar. So... Deal with that. There we go. Yes, this microphone is driving me bonkers. Okay, so we got our AC lines here. We've got two of our grounds in. I am going to get the last ground. Yeah. There we go. Oh, why, thank you. I didn't realize that my screwdriver had ejected its entire contents out the butt. Stick that back in there for a second and take a second to reload. It's like reloading a friggin' revolver. That's kind of cool. My screwdriver wants to be a gun. But we're in Canada, so we don't have guns. We have, like, you know, projectile beavers and furry missiles. We've got BB guns that are just below the legal level of being a gun. <laughs> exactly. All right, so last ground wire. All right, we are going to. Oh, you bugger. I really should have put that on first. We're just going to stick that on there. We'll play the pretend game, yeah. Here we go. All right, out comes the screw. And yeah, there's no lightning in my apartment today. I mean, a few weeks ago, I set a UPS on fire, but that, that's an irregular occurrence around here, so we're always prepared for it. There we go. All right, so there is our microtick ground. All right, so we've got that. So there's our basics so far. Now, we need to hook up our power leads. So because the switch is doing the majority of the power distribution here, uh, we need to hook it up appropriately. Now, if you look at this, this may look a little bit confusing because you're going to see zero and negative 48 volts. That's because it's a negative 48 volt power supply. So. Uh, your zero is actually positive and your negative 48 is your negative. So let's get the batteries hooked up on this thing. I'll show you the power output. So remember folks, breakers and fuses everywhere. We've got our inline fuse in our battery bank here. So if you accidentally short the output of your battery bank, it is not going to explode or catch fire or burn down your enclosure. Instead, what you will get is a blown fuse. All right, so there we go. There's our positive and negative, and we are going to slide these guys in here under the battery. The battery. It says right there, battery. And if you get that confused and you hook it up wrong, it's not going to work. Fortunately, there are also fuses on here. So, there we go. Mm -mm -mm. Would you look at that? Alright, so first things first, we're going to hook up our negative. There's our negative hooked up. Now, positive for the battery bank is going to go through our battery breaker. So I'm just going to slide that into the hole and tighten it up. Ugh, so tight. Okay, here we go. That is now tightened up and I can plug that into the battery bank. I am grounding the wood. <clears throat> There we go. I have secured the, the, the micro tick ground. <clears throat> All right, so there we go. We've got our battery bank going up to the breaker, and then we'll have the breaker coming off of 
bum, 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 here, and going into the battery plus in. So, here we go. What you guys don't know is that I actually built this entire thing before the video and then completely took it apart. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, so here we go. There is our positive lead here. We are going to clean up the wires after. So first things first is just to show you guys how to mount this. I'm using a heavier gauge wire for the batteries, just for shits and giggles. Uh, realistically, the current in this ca cabinet will not cross 15 amps, ultimately, unless there's a fault. And a 15 amp wire can actually take at least twice that. So if there is a fault, that little 20 amp fuse right there is going to pop or that breaker is going to pop, right? So you're, you're protected. This is just a demo. But yeah, you want to make sure that you use the right appropriate cable gauges uh, in your enclosures, which uh, if you're in America, you've got AWG, the American wire gauge. If you're in the UK, I think it's like, uh, it might be ANSI or something like that. Whatever. I'm in Canada. I get no everything. All right, so here we go. So we've got this guy hooked up now. So let's get the AC going. I'm going to fire up the battery first. And apparently this has battery start. But I remember last time when I pushed battery start, I popped my breaker. So I think I'm going to just play it safe. Apparently ALG Com said that I did something wrong, which by all means that can happen. I mean, I'm not an expert. I just know things. This is what happens when you grow up in the farming area. You have to learn how to do everything, otherwise you're considered useless. Alright. How am I going to arrange this cable? I think that'll work. That'll work nice. We'll bring the AC line in behind and tidy that up after, because once it's running, it doesn't matter. Alright, now we got AC. Let's, uh... Cool. Alright, so now I'm going to bring the batteries online. Batteries are online. I have got this thing set to charge at 5 amps. And I've got it set for VRLA, which is the same thing as saying AGM or SLA. All right. If you need me to just decipher what that's supposed to mean, I've already covered it in battery videos, so don't hit me for that. All right. So uh, we're going to take the positive output from here because the positive outputs are not yet hooked up. I'm just going to stick it into one of these breakers here. Voila. And then we will take the negative here, and we are going to go to output A. Now remember, the positive is actually zero because this is reversed. It's negative 48. And that negative 48 refers to reference to ground, which, of course, this is an isolated power supply. But since it's still considered a negative 48, uh, it's still considered reversed on the terminals. But it, realistically, you still have a positive and negative because... Uh, DC is, you know, po polarized, it's binary, polarized, whatever. All right, where did I put my screwdriver? Okay, so we've got our negative tight. Toit like the toyga. And actually, before I do anything else, always verify when you're working with unfamiliar equ equipment what your voltages are and what your polarizations are because once you blow shit up, you have to send it to me to fix. And you don't want to have to do that because that means downtime. Okay, so we are going to go negative to the negative 48 and positive to zero. And we have a 54.2 volt. Awesome. All right, let's turn that off. Okay, so now we can take this little piece of pre-cut, pre-tin cabling here, and we can run this into our bus for the DC breakers. So now I'm gonna go in here like so and slip this guy in here. I'm going to do a little bit of DP here to make sure that both the cables are inserted in the hole and nice and tight. Ew, this microphone. Eh. Okay, and now we're going to bring this guy over to the output. So basically what we're doing here is that the output from this power supply, because this power supply has your low voltage disconnect, it's got your current measurements, it's got everything that you need to monitor input and output and input. There you go. So now that that's all arranged and plugged in, but re realistically, remember this thing, you can put any polarization into it, you know, and it should work. All right, let's turn it on. All right, so, yay, the edge switch has power. Yay. Okay, so, pretty straightforward. While that thing's booting, let's... uh quickly just tidy up some of our cabinet cables with zip ties. All right. 
Oh no, you're using zip ties. You're a horrible human being. <laughs> yes, I am. There we go. And I'm going to make my zip ties just tight enough, but not too tight because we don't want to kink the cables. All right, I'm going to put a couple of these guys on here. Like so. Mm -mm -mm. Alright, great, there we go. And there we go. I'm not gonna tighten it all the way down because I'm not a sociopath. So the whole idea here is just something for the cables to hang in. Nice and pretty like, right? Let me just start prettying these guys up shortly. What I might actually do. Let's uh, take the DC offline and run the positive behind the negatives so that it's a little bit more organized and I can tie it in with the rest of the negatives. There we go. And now we can start hooking up loads. I'm going to be discussing how to remotely monitor everything here with SNMP in another video. And we'll probably have a special guest host who is actually uh, a colleague of mine from the uh, finer parts of the world. Okay, so first things first, let's uh, let's get some power to this, to this router here. All right. No, oh, that thing. This thing wants an IP address. It's whining. All right. So we're gonna hook that guy up there. We've got our Ethernet here, which we will just simply plug into port nine on the router board because we want to conserve ports on our PoE switch. All right. So that's all connected right there. There we go. So now this guy can talk. We've got IPs. It's got power. You can see we are now powering this RB2011 from the first port on our PoE switch. Okay. So that's what you kind of want. So now you've got full control of your enclosure. Realistically, realistically, uh, depending on how you have your enclosure set up, if you want to fail safe, if you're running a Natonic switch, you could plug the Ethernet port for your power supply into the Natonix and Bridge it onto one of the backhaul ports so that if something goes funny on the site that you can still, without interrupting OSPF, access this and power cycle the site to try to hopefully bring it back online. That's just a little trick that you can do, okay? Um, if you're a novice, don't. Oh, yeah, and by the way, one more thing. <clears throat> as soon as I find it. Ah, here they are. The other night I did a cool video. You guys saw it. Let's hook some fans up to the power PoE switch. <laughs> I'm cool. All right. So we're going to use one of these uh, PoE out ports on this switch to power some fans, folks. Doesn't that sound cool? Because it is. All right. There we go. We've got our fan pack right here. And the port's already enabled on here because I might have actually accidentally planned this. There we go. So now we can turn these fans on and off from this Ethernet port right here because we're using fans that are rated at less than an amp total. And we're running them off a 24 volt PoE port. Oh, and there is one final part to this puzzle. We have a thermal probe. This thermal probe is to keep an eye on the temperature of your battery pack so that if your batteries are overheating, this guy here can shut it down. Or if your batteries get too cold, it'll change the charge current going into your uh, battery bank. So what we need for this thing here is duct tape. That's right. Good old Canadian duct tape. Because if they don't find you handsome, at least they'll find you handy. It's also really good if you want to deal with problems. They also sell duct tape tarps and uh, rope in the same section of the hardware store, which is kind of interesting, isn't it? All right, so I'm going to take this thermal probe and uh, I'm going to stick it over here on the top of the battery bank. And I'm just going to... Actually, you know what? That would be a no-no, because you know what's funny about EGMs? The top's actually hollow. Oh, so there's actually a factor of insulation between the cap of the battery and the cell itself. So what are we going to do instead? Because, oh my god, that's a problem. Um, we will just stick it here on the side of the battery where there's some juice. And we will just tape it on there. I could make this look clean, but that's not demonstrating my point. My point is to be very simple and rude so that you guys understand this. Okay, so I'm just going to lie these batteries down over here. Or these uh, fans, sorry. Now we can take this little guy over here 
and we can plug it into the sensor. Now, if you want to be super clean, because actually I saw somebody finally take one of my enclosure designs, which actually isn't my enclosure design. Everybody's been doing it. I just made a video showing people how to do it. Um, they really made it look beautiful with all the clips on the back of the enclosure and all that. I already explained in my other videos that I'm not doing that because this is a demo box. I don't want to fill it with holes and stuff, right? So um, right here, what you could do is you can actually have all the utility leads, like the DC leads and all that, go one direction, and all the data leads go the other direction, just for cleanliness. But in today's situation, nah. All right, so now what you're seeing here, by the way, and remember, in another video, we're going to set up the monitoring to keep an eye on this stuff. We've got, with this RB2011, which you're probably not going to use 2011s because they suck, um, the last five ports are 100 meg. So I'm wasting one of the 100 meg ports for the UPS, just to ensure that I'm not wasting one of the gigabit ports. And in this case here, I'm using port one of the RB2011, because that's the power in port, um, to power it and communicate back with the switch. If you're gonna be running a ton of stuff, like a 24 port Natonix, you're gonna wanna run two jumper cables in here and you're gonna wanna bond them so that you can actually do two gigabits per second from your router to your switch to ensure that you've got full traffic capability, uh, full throughput capability going from the switch to the router. And yeah, that's pretty much it. <clears throat> So this is a basic demo. Last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zip tie some stuff, not Velcro, and I am then going to let you take a close look at it. And here's me moving out of the way because I am a large mammal. All right, so here's all of our cables and batteries are still off by the way, awesome. I can route this cable anywhere I want. And you can too. I believe in you. Here we go. Cleanliness is next to godliness. I should put some music on, like, More Human Than Human by, like, White Zombie. That'd be awesome, but I'm not going to. Here we go. Right-handed. All right, there we go. Oh no, your box doesn't look super, super organized and clean. Don't troll me. <laughs> this is just a tutorial. Just remember that, okay? I, I'm imagining all the trolling that people are gonna be doing because people are trolling all the time. We be trolling. Right, and that's pretty much all there is to it anyway. So yeah, if you want to make your enclosure look really nice, you can get the little plastic clips or little, you can get them from your wholesale. They're, they're sticky back, little square clips, and they've got a four-way bridge on them. You put your zip ties through, and you can start with a loose zip tie like this, or zip tie one cable, and then Velcro the rest of your cables to that. And then you've got some really nice, tidy enclosures. But um, for the most part, We've got our grounds in place. Okay. Not the cleanliness or cleanest. We've got our breakers in place. Everything's running. The UPS is powering the switch, which is in turn powering the RB2011. This is acting as a low voltage disconnect. So if the batteries get low, like down to 48 volts, it will immediately cut off the power to the loads and it will wait idly for the mains to come back on. When the mains returns, it will bring all the loads back on, and then it will also begin charging the batteries again, at, at this case, at 5 amps. Plus, when it fails, before it shuts down, it will notify you through your network ma management software or an email or whatever you choose to do to uh, receive notifications that it's about to shut down. So when the mains fails, you're going to get a notification anyway. And if you've got your batteries sized properly, then you know, it's gonna stay on for a while. Uh, typically most people want four hours minimum, four to eight, eight hours is better. Some people wanna go eight to 12 or even 24 hours with the batteries. But either way, you're gonna know that you've got time to run there with a generator. If not, this will shut everything down without running your batteries into the ground and destroying them and then bring them all back on gracefully once mains returns. So yeah, that's really all you guys need to know. And uh, let's see here, there we go. I think that's about as tight as I can make this cabling right now. 
Uh, I will be doing a video on proper cleanliness in cabinets, I think. That'd be a very, very good idea. So uh, I will use a slightly different design. Again, this is one of many different designs, one of many different layouts, and you can do these about a hundred different ways. So in this case here, I could have actually mounted this back against the backboard here and had everything with their ports facing up, which would have taken up less space. But of course, then I wouldn't be able to show you this heads on like I'm doing in this video right now. And yes, I tried that. I mounted that to the back plate and it did not work. So I mounted this so you could see everything. So again, cleanliness in this demonstration is not something I'm focusing on. I'm focusing on a uh, utilitarian approach where you guys can see how to set it up and how it works, okay? That way, you can set it up yourself and then do cleanliness. I will do a cable management video at some point. So there you go. That's really all there is to it. Um, yeah, and in an upcoming video, there'll be uh, uh, how to manage and how to monitor this stuff in Dude and Zabbix, because those are the two uh, systems that uh, ALGCOM promotes, but of course, realistically, it's SNMP, and you can get the MIBs from ALGCOM, which means that uh, you can use it with any software you want. What is there, like PRTG, Nagios, um, uh, Dude, Zabbix, uh, What's Up, Gold, there's, there's, there's so many. I think UNMS can utilize third-party SNMP stuff as well. So, yeah, that's all there is to it. So, uh, there's your batteries, grounds. Oh, yeah, sorry. <clears throat> For the purists out there. <sighs> there's our ground. And uh, I think that's really all you guys need to know about this video. In, in the previous 24-volt video, I showed you guys how to do calculations and stuff. Uh, we're just filming this part for now, but I might actually do all the 48 volt calculations for you guys as well And then make that into a video and hopefully release it for the weekend. So, uh, I think that's it for now uh, If not, the video is going to go on after the next jump cut